My name is Stephanie and I work with the San Diego River Bar Foundation. We're a nonprofit organization that works with the community to create a better future for the San Diego River. Today we're going to be learning about native and invasive plant species and their relationship with each other in our habitats. You'll also learn how to use art to be a habitat hero. First of all, what's a native species? What's an invasive one? A native species is a living organism that has developed and normally lives and thrives in a particular ecosystem. They can be affected by new species. An invasive species is a living thing that gets introduced to a new place that does not normally belong to, in which typically causes harm. If you look at the word invasive, it may remind you of the word invade. That makes sense because a plant or an animal can invade an area, dominate it, and leave very little resources like food and water for other living things to survive. Invasive animals and plants can disrupt the balance of an ecosystem, which is a large community of living things and their physical environment. For example, an ecosystem includes the soil, the rocks, the water, the trees, the bugs, the birds, the animals. Because the invasive species is invading from somewhere else, they did not evolve in the area where they have been intentionally or unintentionally introduced. There is a lack of natural predators. Invasive populations grow quickly and they outcompete native species for resources disrupting food webs and even endangering some native species. Let's see how invasive species can quickly take over an area. Here we can see how an invasive species can take over in a period of one year, in a period of five years, and after 10 years. Once the species has taken over an ecosystem, sometimes the ecosystem can no longer support all the native wildlife it once did because they don't provide food and shelter that wildlife depend on. Not all species that come from different parts of the world are considered invasive though. Some we just call non-native species. And they can be beneficial in some ways, such as honeybees. They actually play a critical role in pollinating lots of plants, including our crops. So you must be asking yourself, how do they get here? Well, exotic plants and animals arrive here in many different ways. Some arrive by accident, like insects hitching a ride in wooden crates or aquatic animals and small shellfish transported in the hulls of hitching fishing boats. Sometimes they're intentionally brought in here by people, like landscape plants, for example, that are solar nurseries, which eventually escape from people's gardens. Some animals, like pet turtles, are even released in the wild by people and they become invasive pests in our waterways. You live in the San Diego River watershed and you guessed it, it has many plant invaders. Along the San Diego River, there are several invasive species that threaten our habitats. Some are seasonal, like bridal creeper, crown daisy, nasturtium, which overcrowd native flora and do not provide good quality habitat for wildlife and some become fire hazard when they dry up in the summer. But we also have what we call the big bats, like canary palm, giant reed or arundo, tamarisk, eucalyptus, castor beam, and more. Some of these may be pretty to look at sometimes, but they are bad for our ecosystem and not beneficial for wildlife. See all the yellow and orange? Well, that's nosturgeum and crown daisy. Notice how it's taking over this whole habitat. So how can you help? Well, I'm glad you asked, because there are many ways that you can help. Next time you go hiking, be sure to clean your boots and other equipment before and after your hike to make sure you don't have any hitchhikers in there and you're not transporting invasive seeds and plant species. If a bad seed rides along in your boots, you may be accidentally moving that invader into a healthy habitat. You can join an invasive species removal work party. There are many organizations that focus on restoring habitat by simply removing these invaders and allowing native species to reclaim their habitat. The San Diego River Park Foundation needs your help. These volunteers are removing nosturgeon, lots of it. Bye bye, crown daisies. Here they're removing a Brazilian pepper tree. See, now it's all gone. Become a citizen scientist and document plants anywhere you go using your smartphone and an application called iNaturalist. You don't have to know what it is that you're taking a picture of, just take the picture and then an expert will help you identify it. This will help you become a habitat hero when you explore on your own and get better at distinguishing between good natives and nasty invaders. Using the app, you can learn to identify 
plants, insects, and more. You can support native plant nurseries by purchasing and planting native species around your house. You'll be supporting native pollinators like butterflies and bees and moths as well. You can also share what you know with others. The more informed we are, the better the choices we make as a community. And this is when you use your art to be a habitat hero. You can educate and share with others by using art. The California Department of Fish and Wildlife is hosting an Invasive Species Action Week on June 6th through the 14th. As part of this event, they will be holding a youth art contest. There are three age divisions for youths in grades 2nd through 4th, 5th through 8th, and 9th to 12th. All types of media are welcome and encouraged, which includes drawings, paintings, animations, comic strip videos, public announcements, all as long as they reflect the 2020 theme, which is be a habitat hero. You can get pretty creative on your own, but here's an idea. Let's make our own wanted invader poster. Here are some suggested supplies that you can use to create your poster. Feathers, paper towel rolls, rhinestones, markers, construction paper. You can use whatever you have around the house to create your poster. You can include information like where is your invader from? How did it get here? What characteristics does your species have that make it very successful at invading? What can you do to stop its spread? Use species we mention for inspiration or research your own. I chose bridal creeper, also known as African asparagus fern. The plant shoots can form dense mats around the plant that limit the amount of light available. And underground, it also forms mats that prevents other plants from accessing soil moisture and nutrients. This plant also dies back in the summer and becomes a fire hazard. This youth art contest is a great activity to keep us occupied with learning about invasive species while we're out of school. The deadline is May 1st, so it's coming up soon. The top three winners in each division will receive awards and have their entries displayed on the California Department of Fish and Wildlife Invasive Species Action Week webpage. You can find the press release from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, how to submit your entry via email or regular mail, and more at the end of this video and in a resources link. Thank you for watching and thank you to our supporters.